Hi, I am Dr. Rakesh Yadav. I welcome learners for new education session. Today, I will talk about the alternative pathways, particularly pentose phosphate pathway and gluconeogenesis. But before that, if you have not subscribed this channel so far, please consider subscribing right away and press the bell icon to get an alert for new videos. You know, the product of glycolysis are sent through the rest of cellular respiration to produce energy. There is also an alternative branch of glycolysis to produce the pentose sugar that are constituent of DNA and RNA. This pathway, called the pentose phosphate pathway, is special because no energy in the form of ATP or adenosine triphosphate is produced or consumed in this pathway. The pentose phosphate pathway is a metabolic pathway parallel to glycolysis. While it does involve oxidation of glucose, its primary role is anabolic rather than catabolic. It is also called the phosphogluconate pathway and the hexose monophosphate shunt because it pushes the glucose 6-phosphate that is hexose monophosphate from main pathway to sideline pathway. The process is called shunting. It generates NADPH and pentose 5-carbon sugar as well as ribose 5-phosphate. Ribose 5-phosphate is a precursor for the synthesis of nucleotides. The pathway is active in many organs such as in liver, adipose tissue, adrenal cortex, thyroid, testis, ovary and lactating memory glands but especially important in red blood cells, erythrocytes as it detoxifies reactive oxygen species. For most organisms, the pentose phosphate pathway takes place in the cytosol, but in plants, most steps happen in mitochondria. Let us discuss the pathway in details. Now we are ready to enter the first of the two phases of the pentose phosphate pathway. First is oxidative phase and the second is non-oxidative phase. The oxidative phase. Here the substrate will undergo process of oxidation. Oxidation is the breakdown of a molecule as it loses at least one of its electron. This phase is made up of three steps, those are irreversible. In its first step, glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme oxidizes glucose 6-phosphate into 6-phosphogluconone delta lactone by reducing NADP into NADPH. In second step, 6-phosphogluconolectonase hydrolyze 6-phosphogluconodeltalactone into 6-phosphonogluconate. The 6-phosphogluconate dehydrogenase converts 6-phosphogluconate into ribulose 5-phosphate by reducing NADP into NADPH. The non-oxidative phase. It is really handy because these reactions are irreversible. This allows different molecules to enter the pentose phosphate pathway in different areas of non-oxidative phase and be transformed up into the first molecule of non-oxidative phase that is ribulose 5-phosphate. Ribulose 5-phosphate is the precursor to the sugar that makes up nucleotides and is also a product of the oxidative stage. In the first stage of non-oxidative phase, or the fourth stage of the overall pentose phosphate pathway, ribulose 5-phosphate can be converted into two different 5-carbon molecules. One ribose 5-phosphate by isomerase enzyme which is the sugar used to make up DNA and RNA. Second ribulose 5-phosphate molecule which is catalyzed by epimerase to convert into xylulose 5-phosphate. Transketolase can convert ribose 5-phosphate and ribulose 5-phosphate into glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate and sedoheptulose 7-phosphate which are further catalyzed by transaldolase for conversion into erythrose 4-phosphate and fructose 6-phosphate. Transketolase can catalyze xylulose 5-phosphate and erythrose 4-phosphate into glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate and fructose 6-phosphate. All these reactions of non-oxidative phase are reversible in nature. Now the question arises why this pathway takes place. There are three basic reasons for that. First is the production of pentose sugar to enter into the nucleotide synthesis pathway. Second is to detoxify reactive oxygen species in erythrocytes or red blood corpuscles. 
Bird is several product of non-oxidative phase feed other metabolic pathways of the organismal body. Let us now discuss the other alternative metabolic pathway, gluconeogenesis. By definition, gluconeogenesis is the metabolic pathway that results in the generation of glucose from certain non-carbohydrate substrates. Gluconeogenesis is much like glycolysis, only the process occurs in reverse. However, there are exceptions. In glycolysis, there are three highly exergonic steps. Step number 1, 3 and 10. These are also regulatory steps which include the enzymes hexokinase, phosphofructokinase and pyruvate kinase. Biological reactions can occur in both the forward and reverse orientation. If the reaction occur in reverse orientation, the energy normally released in forward orientation is now required. If gluconeogenesis were to simply occur in reverse the reaction, would require too much energy to be profitable to the particular organism. In order to overcome this problem, nature has evolved three other enzymes to replace the glycolysis enzyme hexokinase, phosphofructokinase and pyruvate kinase when going through the process of gluconeogenesis. The first step in gluconeogenesis is the conversion of pyruvate to phosphoenol pyruvate. In order to convert pyruvate to phosphoenol pyruvate, there are several steps and several enzymes required. Pyruvate carboxylase, PEP carboxykinase and malate dehydroxinase are the three enzymes responsible for this conversion. Pyruvate carboxylase is found on the mitochondria and converts pyruvate into oxaloacetate. Because oxaloacetate cannot pass through the mitochondrial membrane, it must be first converted into malate by malate dehydrogenase. Malate can then cross the mitochondria membrane into the cytoplasm, where it is then converted back into oxaloacetate with another malate dehydrogenase. Lastly, oxaloacetate is converted into phosphoenol pyruvate via PEP carboxykinase. The next several steps are exactly the same as glycolysis, only the process is in reverse. The second step that differs from glycolysis is the conversion of fructose 1,6-biphosphate to fructose 6-phosphate with the use of enzyme fructose 1,6-phosphatase. The conversion of fructose 6-phosphate to glucose 6-phosphate uses the same energy as glycolysis phosphoglucoisomerase. The last step that differ from glycolysis is the conversion of glucose 6-phosphate to glucose with the enzyme glucose 6-phosphatase. This enzyme is located in the endoplasmic reticulum. That's all about the pentose phosphate pathway and gluconeogenesis. You must consult the biochemistry textbook for elaborative detail of these alternative pathways. Thank you.